Hello, we have a random integration problem here. We have a definite integral from zero to a of x times the square root of x squared plus a squared with respect to x, and a is a positive uh, number in this case. Let's just go ahead and work through it. Solution. So I'm gonna write it again. So we get the definite integral from zero to a of x times the square root of x squared plus a squared dx. So it looks like we're gonna make a u substitution. and That seems to be the best approach here. We're gonna let u be what's inside the square root. Typically u is like your inside function. So u is equal to x squared plus a squared. And now we'll take the derivative uh, of both sides. So the derivative of u is just du. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And this derivative is gonna be zero, it's a constant. So just 2x dx. Right? a squared is a constant, so its derivative is zero. Now what you wanna do is you wanna look here. Say, hey, there's no two here. Here I have x dx, here I have x dx, but here I have a two. So you have to make this look like this. So you have to get rid of the two. So you can divide both sides by two. So du over two becomes one half du, and that's equal to x dx. Okay, so now we're almost ready to make the substitution, except um, this is a definite integral and we made a u substitution. So let's go ahead and change those limits because these limits are x limits of integration. We're, we're doing a change of variable. We're changing everything from x to u. So these are x values, so let's change them to u values. To do that, um, let's just think about it. So when x is zero, what is u? Well, u is equal to, it's defined by this equation here, right? So it'll be zero squared plus a squared. So a squared, so u is a squared. So when x is zero, u is a squared. I'm gonna circle that. When x is a, well, what is u in this case? It'll be a squared plus a squared. So two a squared, so u is equal to two a squared. I'm gonna circle that, that could be helpful. All right, coming back up here, this is equal to, so let's see, x dx was one half du. So I'm gonna pull out that one half. Then here we have our du. So, so far the only thing that I've, that I've replaced in this problem is the x and the dx, right? That's with one half du. When x is zero, well, let's do this piece here, square root of u, that's easy, right? Because that's our u. And then when x is zero, u is a squared. When x is a, u is 2a squared. To integrate this, we want to write it as u to a power. So the square root of u is really u to the 1 half. So this is equal to 1 half, definite integral from a squared to 2a squared of u to the 1 half to u. And the power rule now says that we can add one and divide by the result. You can always use the power rule when it's uh, something to a power unless the power is negative one. In that case, you're gonna get the natural log of the absolute value of whatever is being raised to a power. So this is equal to one half. Uh, it's gonna be u to the three halves. Then you divide by the result, three halves. I'm going from a squared to two a squared. I love pencils, pencils are good. So here we can multiply by the reciprocal. So it's gonna be two thirds times one half, right? Because when you divide by three halves, you really multiply by two thirds. U to the three halves, a squared, two a squared. These cancel, so this is equal to one third. U to the three halves, a squared, two a squared. Okay, so this is equal to one third. I'm gonna leave that one third outside. Plug in two a squared, so we get two a squared to the three halves minus a squared to the three halves. Okay, I want to do some computations here on the side just to clear things up, just to be really careful here because I want to explain something um, that I think a lot of people might overlook. Uh, and you know, a is positive, right? So why, why did they do that? So I think it would have been more interesting if A was negative. I think that would have been a more interesting result, but I think that, yeah, it would have been harder. And we'll talk about that case as well. So what's happening here? So this is equal to one third. Basically you raise each of these to the three halves power. So this is gonna be two to the three halves 
and then a squared to the 3 halves minus a squared to the 3 halves. Okay, just like that. So what is a squared to 3 halves? Why am I like not simplifying that? So a squared to the 3 halves is the same thing as the square root of a squared cubed. Okay, you can put the 3 wherever you want. Whenever you have x to the m over n, it's the nth root of x. And you can put the m here, or you can put, I can put it here, or I can put it outside. So here, this is our x, and we just chose to put it outside. The square root of a squared is the absolute value of a. Boom, that's the key step. Because a is positive, the absolute value of a is a. So it's a cubed. If a was less than zero, there would be a negative here, right? So that, that's sneaky. That's sneaky, but um, wherever I got this from, they didn't do that. Um, they didn't make a negative. So anyways, this is just going to be one-third, two to three halves, and we say it's going to be a cubed minus a cubed. So I guess you can, you can pull out the a cubed, so it would be like one-third a cubed, two to the three halves, minus one. And you can, you can play with two to the three halves. Two to the three halves, you can write this as like two to the two halves, two to the one half, which is just two squared to two if you like. So you can write this as one third a cubed, two root two minus one. So all kinds of things, all kinds of ways you can write the answer. That's one way to write it. Uh, it's a little bit nicer. But the point is that uh, a was positive, and so that that is something that happened there. Like if a was negative, uh, it would be different. And this is because the square root of a squared is equal to the absolute value of a, right? And that's equal to a if a is greater than or equal to zero, and negative a if a is less than zero. So if a were negative, if a were negative here, you would get uh, negative a cubed, which would be negative a cubed, like this. And then you would have um, a negative here and a negative here. So it, it would, actually, what would happen there? Let's think about that. If this was negative and this was negative, yeah, I would change the answer because this would be a plus, this would be a minus, so let's just do it. If a was negative, you would get one-third, two to the three-halves, negative a cubed, plus a cubed. Yeah, so it would become, it would, be, it would just flip the sign, right? It would be one-third, a cubed minus a cubed two to the three halves. So very similar answer, but not exactly the same, right? The it would you would pull out the a cubed one minus, and then you would get two root two. So it, it, it would almost be the same. Almost be the same. Looks like my light here died. I had a little light and it just uh, it just went out. So hopefully you can see. Anyways, I'm rambling about cases that aren't the case. In this case, a is positive, but it's always good to you know investigate what happens if this is the case. So if a is negative. It's a much harder problem, but randomness, uh, just a random integral, keep doing mathematics.